Okay, so let me just go through quickly his sort of, you know, bottom line, and then we'll get to the next couple studies. So what are the, the different sort of comparative statics in his model, if you could put it that way? Results are less likely to be true the smaller the studies, meaning smaller sample size. So the more underpowered they are, um, you know, if you're really underpowered, you really can't detect an effect. So almost anything is a false positive. Uh, the smaller the effect sizes. So, you know, again, if you have really huge effects and really significant effects, it is more likely to be real. So these sort of smallish, marginally significant effects are the ones that are, that are less plausible. Uh, the more exploratory analysis, meaning, you know, R is really low. We don't really know what we're doing. Um, so it's probably a false positive. The greater the flexibility in research design is the U-term. The more flexibility the researcher has, the more they can drop data they don't like, look at a different outcome variable, run a different model until they get P less than 0.05. And that's really the U-term here. Another form of bias is his term five, the greater the financial or ideological interests. So for whatever reason, you know, researchers go into a problem wanting to find something, they're going to be more likely to find it. And then he says the hotter the research field. So there's a lot of competition and maybe a lot of reward for being the first to find something, you'd get more bias, basically. That's his, that's his, uh, his claim. Okay, what else can we do? And this is, you know, Ioannidis saying, you know, a whole bunch of things we should do, and this is anticipating some of what we're going to discuss, you know, in the course. First of all, we should have more highly powered studies. And he says, especially when R is high. So it's interesting. He says, we should be putting our research dollars into studies where R is high. Like, we have a, a sense there's something real here already. Like, our prior is there's something here. And put together a high-powered study that just, like, definitively proves it. So again, he's very much thinking in this binary world, but that's what he sees as a priority. He really downplays the importance of exploratory research in many ways in this article. He sees it as just like full of non-results. Um, we should also focus on accumulation of evidence across studies, of course. So we should be you know, not just focusing on the single study, but sort of combining estimates. We'll talk about that in the course. Upfront registration can constrain analysis. He's very concerned about you. So this would help a lot. If only we could sort of get people to stick with what they see as sort of, and this gets back to the point about what the plausible specifications are. So if you're forced ex ante in a pre-analysis plan, say like, here are a couple approaches I think are sensible, and you have to show those, then it's going to sort of tie your hands to some extent. It's going to make it a little harder to data mine. It's going to make it a little harder to, to sort of deviate in some radical way. Um, point four is ascertaining expert opinions. This will help us get a handle on R. Um, and then finally, point five, we should do multiple testing adjustments. If you have 10 hypotheses, you can sort of adjust your p-values for the fact that you've run 10 tests. And we very rarely do it in any social science field that I know. This would be a very easy thing to do to sort of raise the bar a little bit and, and hopefully weed out some false positives, I think.